good afternoon students how are you i hope you all are fine and staying home to keep yourself safe from covid 19 students in the previous module we have discussed about the factors affecting distribution of population students here in this module we are going to discuss about the composition of population so let us begin students population composition how crowded a country is has little to do with its level of economic development so through this uh, population composition we can understand what is the economic level of the country's development for example both bangladesh and japan are very densely populated but japan is far more economically developed than bangladesh to understand the role of people as a source as a resource we need to know more about their qualities people vary greatly in their age sex literacy level health condi health condition occupation and income level age composition age composition of a population refers to the number of people in different age group in a country so that age group given here that 15 years 15 to 59 and 59 year above it is one of the most basic characteristic of population because age structure tells us ki how much working population is there in our country and how much dependent population is there in our country to an important degree a person's age influence what he she needs buys and buys does and his her capacity to perform so by this age group only we can get idea about these things so consequently the number and percentage of a population found within the children working age and age group are notable determinant of the population's social and economic structure so by this age group only population's social and economic structure we can understand the population of a nation is generally grouped into three broad categories that broad categories are this 15 years the children generally below 15 years working is 15 to 59 years and age group above 959 years <coughs> that is 60 and above this age group below 15 years they are economically unproductive it is believed by the indian government that they are economically unproductive and need to be provided with food clothing education and medical care for their upliftment for their growth for their human capital formation working is that is 15 to 59 years they are economically productive that means they can do work any productive work in the economy which can generate income and biologically reproductive means able to give birth to their children they comprise the working population so this age group 15 to 59 years is referred as working population aged group that is old age people they can be economically productive though they may have retired so here 
it is uh, person to person vary because some people are even capable of doing number of work type number of work and the type many type of work even after get retired so this depends on the person and this very person to person they may be working voluntarily voluntarily means as per their desire they can continue the work but by the law or by any government rule if they are working in a government organization that rule does not bound them to work but they are not available for employment through recruitment recruitment means employment opportunities whatever released by the government that is not available for this age group but nowadays to a higher institution highly uh, intellectual sphere required in those categories in some of the posts government asks for this age group also that they can join the percentage of children and aged affect the dependency ratio because this groups are not producer means from here we think that the percentage of children and aged means the children and old age people affect the dependency ratio means as much children and old age people will be there in the population that population will be more dependent on the producers here in this pie uh, chart you can see that children are this much 34.4 percent and aged people 6.9 percent and see adult showing that 58.7 percent the maximum portion of our country's population is falling in adult age group means uh, working age groups that is why our economy is uh, referred as the most productive population in the world even in the world we are having such condition the proportion of the three groups in india's population as here we could see now let us move to another slide sex ratio sex ratio is defined as the number of females per 1000 males in the population why are we studying about this sex ratio it is for keeping balance between the male and female ratio in the population because both are very important for the development of our country we cannot think about the development only on the basis of males or females both are equally important in the economy so that is why we study about sex ratio this information is an important in social indicator to measure the extent of equality between males and females so how the males and female are equally treated in the society this information also we get from this sex ratio you can say that gender discrimination is existing in the country in the economy in the society or not by this sex ratio we can understand the sex ratio in the country has always remained unfavorable to females yes of course from the beginning 
it is seen that female proportion in the population looks much lower than the males. The table 6.2 shows sex ratio. See, in 1951, it was 946 per thousand. In 1961, 19, 941, see now decreasing, it is not increasing as after independence, when we were under our control, no one was ruling on us, we were having our government. So now this sex ratio is decreasing means the female population is decreasing 1971 19, 930 now here little increase is seen after 10 years that in 1981 that 934 again it has come down see here in 1991 929 929 and then 2001 933 and 2011 943 so even up to 2011 we could not achieve that sex ratio which was in the beginning just after independence so see the condition of sex ratio in our country and how much gender discrimination how much balance is there in the male and female you can understand through this data. Kerala has sex ratio of 1084 females per thousand males. Puducherry 1038 females for every thousand males. While New Delhi has only 866 females per thousand males and Haryana 877 this is the lowest in our country so maximum gender discrimination you can observe in these states Delhi and Haryana the sex ratio in the country okay this we covered here now literacy rate Literacy rate is a very important quality of population. Actually, in this literacy rate, we count the people. A person aged 7 year and above who can read and write with understanding in any language is treated as literate and this also calculated or counted per thousand population you can say what is literacy rate that literacy rate is the number of people who are in the age of seven year or above able to read and write with understanding in any language per thousand population per thousand people so that is literacy rate obviously only an informed, educated citizen can make intelligent choice and undertake research and development projects. You know that how much this important research and development projects. This research and development projects only responsible for the innovation of new technologies, new techniques for innovation.
so that literate population age educated population is very much required for better development of our country low level of literacy are a serious obstacle for economic improvement if low level of this literacy rate is there this becomes obstacle hurdle restriction for the economic improvement there has been a steady improvement in the literacy level in india not good improvement but steady improvement has been observed the literacy rate in the country as per the census 2011 is 73% means 73% population is educated not educated you can say literate see educated and literate there is difference literate means yes they are able to read and write with understanding any any language but educated people are certified by the government educational organizations that they have this kind of certificate degree all these but see males 80.9% and 64.6% for females is male are more literate than females in our country again here you can see gender discrimination between males and females by our society by the people in our country as you know that in earlier time even today also you can see in some of the families that they don't like to send their females that female child to school for education they don't like to provide the same educational facility which is available for their male child to females so this way you can see that that literacy rate is again showing here ki how much gender discrimination is there in our country so i hope you understood why such difference exist number of other regions are there that traditional beliefs that males are more important than females males will bring good earning when they will be when they will grown up females are observed as a burden that they have to go to other family after marriage so that way they are having such narrow minded thinking and that they don't try to provide the same educational facility to their female child as they provide to their male child so this way such differences continue and exist and this is visible through this 80.49% and 64.6%
occupational structure occupational structure is related to that occupation the people engaged in different types of activities that are primary secondary and tertiary activities so the percentage of population that is economically active is an important index of development yes of course in the previous slide we saw ki that how much productive population we have about 59 uh, 57 percent that percent was 58.7 percent the distribution of population according to different types of population is referred as the occupational structure distribution of population according to different type of occupation occupation is that type of work they do for their livelihood an enormous variety of occupations are found in a in any country that belongs to primary secondary and tertiary primary activity includes agriculture animal husbandry forestry fishing mining and querying etc secondary activities include manufacturing industries building and construction work etc mainly the work is done by the machines and some transformation is done in the natural products here in this primary you can see there that the activities are related to the natural products tertiary activity includes transport communication commerce administration and other services so here all are services so the service sector you can say is tertiary sector activities so they are engaged in such kind of activities the proportion of people working in different activities varies in developed and developing countries this is the main criteria to discuss okay, that developed and developing country how related to occupational structure okay, that developed nations have a high proportion of people in secondary and tertiary activities and developing countries tend to have higher proportion of their workforce engaged in primary activities because they are in initial stages of their country's development their economic development and in india about 64% of people engaged in only in agriculture so by this you can understand that our country falls in this developing country category the proportion of population dependent on secondary and tertiary sector is about 13 and 20% respectively here through this table also you can see the percentage of people working in different sectors there has been an occupational shift in favor of secondary and tertiary sector because of the growing industrialization 
एंड अर्बनाइजेशन इन रिसेंट टाइम इन अवर कंट्री दिस ऑक्यूपेशनल शिफ्ट हैज बीन सी बाई दिस यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड सी द प्राइमरी सेक्टर वॉज एट सेवेंटी वन परसेंट सेवेंटी वन पॉइंट एट परसेंट दैट ऑलमोस्ट यू कैन से सेवेंटी टू परसेंट वॉज एंगेज इन प्राइमरी सेक्टर ट्वेल्व परसेंट ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट इन सेकेंडरी एंड फिफ्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट इन टर्सरी सेक्टर एक्टिविटी दैट इज About two nineteen hundred one before independence, and after independence, almost similar condition. You can see seventy two point one, ten point one. Little increase is seen here. That seventeen point three percent, and this ratio you can see how. maintain up to the 1971 up to this year this agricultural activity means the people dependent on agriculture dependent on primary sector agriculture not only agriculture some other activities also so this is 72.1% population was engaged in seven this primary sector and see that secondary sector that is mainly industrial sector population is very less in occupation and even this tertiary sector also this ratio is maintained and little decrease you can see from this 1971 to 1981 that 72 around 4% you can say are 3.9% 3.8% so this shift is there sorry 3.7 it is there and little decrease here also observe and up to 2000 better improvement is looking that 56.6 but even more even then more than 50% population is engaged in primary sector activities and this is 17 and tertiary sector increased up to the 25.8% this is 2000 data in 2011 this is given here 64% population in only agriculture so still this dependency is seen Over primary sector, so there is a lot of improvement required for the occupational structure, and that is possible through improvement in education, educational qualities, development of industries. diversification and expansion of tertiary sector activities so all that are respond will result in better improvement of our economy where more and more people will be engaged in secondary sector and tertiary sector and this is required to reduce the burden over primary sector because in primary sector when the people are engaged more so we will discuss in the next module 
that in primary sector whatever these use number of population use ratio of population big means more than 50% population is engaged that is causing a kind of unemployment that is hidden unemployment that unemployment is there but that doesn't look so this will discuss in next module or in economics we have discussed that this guy is unemployment where people are engaged more than required in this sector and that increase the dependency of population over agriculture even if they are not required then also they are engaged in the work and this way they are not improving the gdp the production of this sector and unnecessarily they are engaged in the primary sector so this will be better to remove such extra people from here and include them in this secondary sector and tertiary sector so that this ratio can increase and better improvement of the economy can be there population pyramid an interesting way of studying a population composition of a country is by looking at the population pyramid also called an age sex pyramid a population pyramid shows the total population divided into various age groups example 5 to 9 years 10 to 14 years so different age groups are there and according to that age group the percentage of that population subdivided into males and females in each of those groups the shapes of the population pyramid tells the story of the people living in that particular country the number of children below 15 years are shown at the bottom and reflect the level of births in the country the size of top shows the number of aged people above 65 years and reflect the number of deaths the population pyramid also tells tells us how many dependent are in a country because by this the people above the 60 and 65 year is and below 15 year is that are dependent population and on the basis of this information we can get how many people are dependent by this graphical presentation there are two groups of dependent young dependents is below 15 years and elderly dependent is over 65 years so those of working age are economically active so in this category whoever are there that are economically active population the population pyramid of a country in which birth and death rates both are high is broad at the base and rapidly narrows toward the top means old is people are also less in number and due to high birth rate the bottom is also broad due to the the lower is people more in numbers this is because although many children are born a large percentage of them die in the, their infancy relatively a few become adults and there are very few old people so this is 
the reason behind such kind of population pyramid which is shown in this figure and this situation is typically typified by pyramid shown for this this is a pyramid of country like kenya in countries where deaths death rates especially amongst the very young are decreasing the pyramid is broad in younger age groups because more infants survive at adulthood this can be seen the pyramid of india in this figure such population contain relatively large number of young people and which means a strong expanding labor force so by this how much broader this category will be there so that will show how the young people are increasing labor force are increasing in countries like japan low birth rate make the pyramid narrow at the base as here you can observe ki base is very narrow in comparison to the middle part so decreased death rates allow number of people to reach in old days and that causes such kind of population pyramids so this was all about the students in the chapter we'll discuss the exercise of the chapter in the next class till then students revise the chapter read the chapter bye bye students